latest now from the Middle East. Syrian state media reporting that an airstrike hit Iran's consular building in Syria today. This comes following increased tensions between Israel and Iranian-backed proxies in that region. Trey Yinks now with more from Tel Aviv. A massive airstrike targeting a facility linked to Iran's embassy in Syria on Monday. Iranian state media is blaming Israel for the attack, which reportedly killed one of Tehran's top military commanders, who played a key role in supplying weapons to the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. Several Iranian diplomats also reportedly died. Israel has not commented on the attack, but airstrikes like this have become more common following Hamas's October attack on Israel and cross-border clashes on the Israel-Lebanon border. Of course, we are worried about escalation. We are worried about anything that would cause the conflict to, to expand or widen in any way. Back in Gaza, Israeli forces withdrew from the territory's largest hospital on Monday. During the two-week raid on al-Shifa, the IDF says it killed some 200 Hamas militants and obtained weapons and intelligence. Shifa has become a central terrorist headquarters for Hamas. Our forces' surprise action was carried out with precision. U.S. officials tell Fox News Secretary of State Antony Blinken, along with other U.S. and Israeli officials, are meeting virtually to discuss Israel's plans for the next stage of the war, an offensive in the city of Rafah. It comes as Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu faces growing pressure from protesters in Jerusalem to reach a ceasefire deal and hold early elections. If he's not uh, changed, and again, if uh, uh, good leaders or a new coalition is not taking over, we are doomed. Welcome to Understanding Our Times. I'm Ken Michael. Joining me is Pastor Josh Schwartz. And Pastor Josh, Right now, Israel is under a lot of pressure. They're getting it from every side right now. They're getting it from uh, their own people who want the hostages released. Mm -hmm. They're getting it from all of the nations just about across the world are demanding that there be a ceasefire now. But the government of Israel realizes that if they don't continue and not just stop Hamas, but take them out completely uh, eliminate Hamas, they're going to come and attack them again. I mean, that's right. what they're, that's what they've said they're going to do. Yeah. They'll just regroup. And it's like they did, uh, in the, the Shifa hospital, right? They, they never expected Israel to go back to Shifa, right. but the reality is Israel went back and caught them all off guard because they didn't expect it. Numerous terrorists were, were captured and or, or killed when they went back there. And so they don't want the Israeli uh, forces to go into, uh, Rafa right now. No. And that's where there's four divisions set up right now. If you're paying attention, if you're watching what's mm -hmm. going on, their government is just under extreme pressure right now. And like I said, uh, what do you do? Do you stop and get some hostages released, right. uh, not knowing what's going to take place after that? And then what they're calling for is a complete stoppage of uh Israel coming after them and, and eliminating them. They want all hostilities ceased right now. But not only that, they've got the pressure from the north because everything with the Iranian proxies of Hezbollah in the north is just screaming it's about to go hot. Exactly. So we need to pray for what's going on there. This just happened a, a few days ago. Iran's saying that they're going to retaliate. Yeah. They're certainly going to use their proxies uh, to do that. And then, you know, explain... Israel hit a, a target in Syria that hasn't been, it, it was a major target. Right. And I think it's very important to understand what we're talking about happened Monday. Um, our, here in the U.S., it was Monday midday, where Israel intentionally and precisely hit the uh, Iranian embassy consulate. They call it a consulate as, as though it's the ambassador's household. The truth is it was more than anything else a, ta a terror base right in between the Canadian embassy and the Iranian embassy. With precision, they hit it and they destroyed uh, what that building was, was holding. was a terror base. They destroyed um, very high-ranking officials from the IRGC, and uh, Iran is not happy. No, and we can expect... Uh, more retaliation from uh, from the north and from right. uh, Hamas if, if they can regroup also. Mm -hmm. So pray for Jerusalem. Keep your eye on Israel. That's mm -hmm. the apple of God's eye. That's where everything's going to eventually happen. And we know that's uh, especially in the end times, especially yeah. during the, the tribulation. I mean, everything's going to be going down in Israel. Yeah. And this gives us a glimpse of what 
will take place in the future with, say, Isaiah 17, 1, where Isaiah tells us that Damascus will become a heap of ruins. We just saw on Monday how easy it was for Israel to come in with F-35s, fire some missiles, and take something out so precisely. It can happen in a, in, in a moment yeah. without any any warning yeah it won't take much for israel to make damascus a, a heap of ruins right uh and then we're also seeing the lead up uh to ezekiel 38 sure. which could happen also i mean uh, all it would take is for israel to accidentally or intentionally uh, hit some russian troops which are stationed right there also i mean yeah. if yeah. that happens then russia's into it so yeah. anything can happen keep your eye on israel okay. so josh this last week was the holiest day that Christians recognize, and that's Resurrection Sunday. Uh, our government and others felt it necessary, however, to recognize uh, Transgender Recognition Day instead of Easter. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I, I think it is an absolute utter abomination. And as we'll see in a moment, it, it, it's difficult because it's not politically correct to deal with anything with Christianity anymore. But everything else is fair game, right? Well, now Easter and you'll see Christmas, you know, you know, which follows in December, will become a political football. And you're seeing these arguments on both sides where Christians are arguing for Easter and the other side is persecuting. And we, we said this persecution yeah. is coming just for standing up for Christianity. So I'm going to show you a clip and you're going to hear from both sides of the story on this. And it's not just happening uh, in the United States, you're going to see that it also, in Australia, they're recognizing the same thing we are. And you're going to hear from a group called the Young Turks, and they're going to comment um, from a different perspective. In fact, they're, they're coming right out and saying that Christians actually hate uh, the LGBTQ community. So let's take a look at this, and then we'll comment on it. This day, the holiest in the Christian calendar, was used as a special day for transgender people. Well, I celebrate Festivus, but I wouldn't even put this on my list of grievances mm -hmm. um, because I wouldn't mind at all if Transgender Visibility Day was on the same day as Festivus because I don't hate transgender people. Do you see what they're doing? They're telling on themselves. I There's, mean, they're obvious about <laughs> their disdain for transgender people. They don't hide it. Yeah. So that's not surprising. In the U.S., the Biden administration made it official. March the 31st was the Transgender Day of Visibility. I and mean, we despise you with every fiber of our being. And we also despise gay people. Who are we kidding? Is it, are you really that stupid that you would think that the Republican politicians don't despise gay people and every single person in the LGBTQ community? But the clash of these two days is a little odd. And as it turned out, it gave us a little insight into how the woke messages are the ones that dominate for the political left. Because Wong did make a post also about Easter, but it was all about having a happy long weekend and staying safe. Nothing about the significance of the religious festival or observance. Yet earlier in the month, Wong posted about the Muslim month of Ramadan, and she made reference to it as the holy month. You see, the woke can refer to Ramadan as a holy month, as they should, that's its significance. But Easter, that's just a long weekend apparently, and Transgender Visibility Day too. How about respect for all? How about we have a little more visibility for Christianity at Easter too? So Josh, for hundreds of years, the United States has recognized you know, Judeo-Christian values yep. and the recognition of Resurrection Sunday or Easter, as, as most people refer to it. And we're seeing this coming under attack now. We're, yeah. It's not a holy day. It's more about just having a day off and Easter bunnies and eggs and all that. Um, give us your perspective on where we're going with this. Yeah, this is the woke agenda, as he was saying there. This is their absolute utter desire to uh, cancel anything that has anything to do with Western values, and Western values being here, specifically Christian, Judeo-Christian values. And it is, it is an utter abomination that you, we can give uh, rights, we can give notification, we can give notoriety to everything else, but what truly took place 
Christianity, Jesus' resurrection, the most holy day uh, of the year where Christ defeated death, conquered the grave, and resurrected as God's seal of approval that Christ was the atoning sacrifice for your sins and for mine. This is the most important day in human history. But we can't, it's just Easter, it's about bunnies who lay eggs. And they're trying to make it out that Christians hate, like I said, those in the LGBTQ community. Anyone that goes against their ideas yeah. or I, ideology, then we hate them. And that's certainly not true. We don't hate groups of people. Uh, Christians uh, speak out against sin and right. repentance of that sin. And I think that's so important. That That's the furthest from the truth. We do not hate gay people. We do not hate trans people. We don't hate people from the LGBTQ plus community. We recognize that what they're dealing with is a sin issue. And the beauty is this. Christ Jesus, the one who resurrected, he also died. He died for every single one of us. And Romans tells us in Romans chapter 5 that he died for us while we were weak ungodly, sinful enemies. That's how every single one of us, no matter what your sin, you're separated exactly. from God. Exactly. And it, 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 it doesn't matter because Jesus died for you in the midst of that sin while you were weak, while you were ungodly, while you were his enemy, while you were sinful to make reconciliation for you through faith in him alone. Exactly. And folks, understand, you know, people ask, how did we get to this point so quickly? Mm -hmm. And we've gone over this before. It's very simple, folks. You target young people. You target children. And that's exactly what we're doing with this LGBTQ movement. And unfortunately, if you speak out against it, you are attacked viciously. And what we're doing right now, and we're seeing it, they're not only teaching it in schools, they're encouraging it. And they're encouraging children to not only accept this, but to actually transition, if they feel like they should, transition from the gender that God made them into the other or a different gender. We're seeing uh, children being sexually mutilated, their healthy organs uh, being surgically removed. We're seeing poison being injected into their bodies with these hormone blockers that are permanent. These are permanent. Yeah. Uh, doctors and all the uh, advocates for this are telling us, oh, no, they, they can just stop taking these and they'll transition right back. That is a lie. Yep. Yeah. These are permanent physical and absolutely permanent psychological factors that we're dealing with. And we're imposing this on children. Right. This is the abomination of this. And this is what really gets me riled up. When you start messing with children, mm -hmm. uh, they have no business uh, being involved in any type of sexuality except probably uh, learning from their parents. Absolutely. And That's what it comes this down is, to. This does not belong in schools, folks. No, and this is a intentional brainwashing of the upcoming generation so that you can push your... Uh, ideology, your wokeness, your cancel culture. Exactly. It is, it's, it's a movement towards what the globalist elite want to see taken exactly. down. And folks, this is the great reset that we've been talking about. This is Marxism. This is where you completely destroy the foundation and rebuild it around your ideology. And that's what we're seeing from Klaus Schwab and all his minions. They have they are destroying the economy. They are destroying the medical mm -hmm. system. They are destroying anything personal, anything of our uh, ideology or values, Judeo-Christian values especially. They're wiping them out, starting over and saying, look, uh, we've got the answers for you. And here, follow us. And that's exactly what they plan to do with their 2030 agenda. This is one of those agenda items to total demise or replacement of Western values. Western values are Judeo-Christian values that are based on the scriptures, and they want to make them entirely obsolete in the culture. And unfortunately, folks, we're, we're allowing this. And we keep saying, if you're not, you know, we might not be able to change some of these global issues. But when people ask me, well, what do I do? How can I change this? Uh, we tell them, look, it starts in your family. Yes. It starts in your neighborhood. It starts in your community. You need to start going to your city and county uh, meetings. You need mm -hmm. to start going to your school board meetings and finding out what's happening. And like we always say, our ministry rallies around Ezekiel 33. We are watchmen on the wall. And folks, we all need to be watchmen on the wall. We need to pay attention to what's happening. And we need to start telling people what's out there and what's coming. Because... Um, 
we've been getting some feedback. Hey, okay, you're telling us to be prepared to watch. Sure. What should be? What should we be prepared for? What do we do? So some things that you can do that we've talked about in the past. Look, our government is turning against the people. We're seeing that. They are willing to do anything and everything to change our lives to the point where the president has said, I'll declare a state of uh, emergency for climate change if yep. I have to, just to obtain power. So, Josh, let's talk about some of these things that people need to be prepared for. Yeah, I think there's four aspects of preparedness. Uh, the first is going to be food, the th- second, water, the third, energy, and then the fourth, protection. So let's just think through all four of those systematically. Food. So what do you do to prepare for food? Well, you get canned goods, non-perishable items. Uh, They are not the cheapest, of course, but they're cheaper than more produce, and they have a long shelf life. So you... Uh, Every time you go to the grocery store, pick up a couple extra cans of vegetables, extra cans of soup. Uh, Pick up, if you can, uh, put it in the budget to grab a big bag of rice. And so that you can have these things and put put them, store them in a dry, cool, dark place so that they'll last longer. So that when everything does go bad, you have the food. Right. That's number one. Because we've we've been telling people... You do not want to fight people for food because not only... It, it'll get ugly. In yeah. fact, I believe it'll get very violent, especially if things go really, really bad. And it it won't take much. It, no. It'll only take uh, a half a day to a day for people to realize that we're in trouble and there will be a mad rush to stores. So you do not want to be out and about no. fighting people for food. We've seen glimpses of this yep. happen already. We've seen food shelves being wiped out in certain well, areas. You remember what happened during the COVID pandemic? With toilet paper? I was in Costco when that happened. Exactly. I watched people rush to a pallet of toilet paper. They had, the employees had to hold people back. Yeah. And, and that's, that's for toilet paper. That's not food. Right. I think the second thing we have to uh, prepare for is water. We you know, we take water for granted in a first world country. You turn on a faucet, it comes out. Praise God for that. But there could come a time when that won't happen. So what do you do? You want clean water. I think the best product out there is a life straw. They're $20. You can get them uh, at Walmart. You can get them at Amazon. You can get them all over the place. And it is a filter that as you suck the water through the straw, it filters the water for exactly. you. They have other um, water bottles and other things that Life Straw puts out for water purification. That's deeply, deeply important because we need, our bodies are weak, let's be honest, and we need fresh water. And not only that, I think we need to be prepared if the electrical grid goes down because yes. that could, that's been happening and is happening all over the country. And there are portable generators you yeah. can get, uh, both both gas and solar. So look into those and just be prepared. You never and it, it may only you may only need it for a couple of days. And hopefully that's what it comes down to. Exactly. And when it comes down to it, if you can't afford or don't know how to work a generator, most of us have a, a gas grill. So buy a couple extra cans of propane. Have a big five-gallon one extra, a couple of the one-pound propane tanks available, a a little camp stove, just so that you can cook your food. You can boil your water. You can take care of the things that they get take care of. We don't need to go overboard and buy this huge generator. Just take care. Think of it. You're going on a backpacking trip. You're going on a camping trip. How do we survive in the wilderness off the grid? Food, water, or or power. Exactly. And, folks, we're not talking about prepping for the seven-year tribulation or years down the road, building a bunker or anything like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about being prepared short-term for a catastrophe. And this is normal. This is right. I mean, uh, God told Noah there was going to be a flood that comes, and what did he do? He built an ark, as God told him to. Uh, Joseph was warned in a vision that there was going to be famine. What did he do? He prepared. The same thing even here and now in Israel in modern day. We know that there is going to be uh, fighting in the north. What are the people in the north doing? They're preparing for three to seven days of having no power. We ought to be doing the same thing. We must take care of ourselves. Exactly. Prepare for the worst case scenario. Don't depend on the government no. to come and help you. That's the number one thing. People, We're so used to having everything handed to us and given to us. All we have to do is look around the country and around the world the government is not coming quickly to help. They will if they can, 
But like we said last week and the week before, they are so short-staffed, especially our law enforcement right now. They are overworked. They are understaffed. Mm -hmm. um, prepare, like Josh said, to protect yourself. Yeah, and I, I think uh, we see this as a burden. We see this as a scary thing. Make it fun for your family. Uh, get some chickens. Just enjoy having it because there, it's fun. You have a, an extra pet there. You build that com companionship with. Then you have the eggs. You have the chicken if you need it. You, you, you just make this more fun for the family than, oh, no, I'm a prepper and I'm going to go to my bunker. That's not what we're saying. Right. I can't tell you how many people I've met that actually have chickens right now. It's we had some. It's great. Yeah, exactly. They're fun. And it's a great idea. So um, watch and be prepared for yeah. what's coming. That That's our message. All right. So we have a couple things that uh, events coming up uh, I want to talk about. On Friday, April 19th and Saturday, April 20th, I'm going to be at Kiowa, Kansas, at Kiowa Southern Baptist a church for a prophecy conference. Uh, Dr. J.B. Hickson and I will be there. If you haven't heard J.B., he's a wonderful pastor and Bible teacher. Uh, he is spot on. He's been on Jan's program, and I'm looking forward to that. He'll be speaking Friday night and Saturday morning. I'll be speaking Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening. And I know, Josh, you've got a couple events coming up. Yeah, coming up this upcoming weekend, April 12th and 13th, I'll be in Holland, Minnesota at First Presbyterian Church of Holland doing two evening events, 7 p.m. on Friday and 7 p.m. on Saturday, talking about all kinds of different stuff. And then after that, a few weeks later, I'll be in Silver Spring, Maryland at the People's Community Baptist Church uh, talking about all these same similar things. It's going to be a great time there. So if you're in the D.C., Baltimore area, we'd love to have you join us there and then for those of you that join us in orlando for the prophecy watchers conference we're going to be out in colorado springs june 27th through the 30th again with prophecy watchers it's that is going to be a, a good one if you've never been to colorado springs it's beautiful uh, but sign up now uh in speaking with mondo he said it's filling up i believe there's somewhere around a thousand tickets only and they're going quick <laughs> Excuse me. So make sure you sign up for that. It's June 27th through the 30th. Uh, just a plethora of speakers are going to be there. Yeah. I believe 28 or, or right around there. Uh, people that you've watched and seen, if you've, especially if you've watched Jan's program, most of these people have been on her program. And if you're into eschatology and prophecy, these guys are the guys yeah. to watch. And it's a great time because you're with like-minded believers. You're worshiping together. You're fellowshipping together. You're being encouraged together. And it's, it's going to be, uh, it's beautiful. Colorado Springs is a beautiful area. And then finally, if you haven't checked out Harbingers Daily, please go to their website, Har Harbingers Daily, harbingers.tv. Uh, it's just a wonderful website. It has a lot of the... Uh, people, like I said, that have been on Jan's program. We've interviewed some of these people. Uh, it's a great uh, resource to go for eschatology and Bible prophecy. Uh, wonderful website. Brianna does a great job, so check that out. Well, friends, these are some heavy things that we've covered. These are real things that we've covered. And the most important thing that we're going to cover is this. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you are just tuning into this, if you've never heard these things before, and your eyes are being opened to what's going on around the world, we're doing our job. We're being watchmen, right, Ken, as Ezekiel 38 points out. But we would be totally remiss if we didn't point you to Jesus. The, the hope of eternal salvation is in Christ Jesus alone. Let me just give you a quick explanation. God created everything, and it was very good. The capstone of creation was humanity. He made us in his image. He made us male and female, desiring a relationship with every single person that he created. But what happened? We know Genesis 3 comes after Genesis 1. And in Genesis 3, there was the fall. The serpent, the, crafty, the craftiest of all the beings of the field, came and he deceived. He deceived Eve and Adam with her. And in that deception, they ate. And this comes forth sin. And because of us being descendants of all of, of them, we are all fallen. We are all sinful. But the beauty is this. God didn't give up on creation. God didn't give up on humanity. God, from the beginning, had his intention to send Christ Jesus, his son, to die in our place. That's what we celebrate at Easter. Jesus lived a perfect life. He died a perfect death, but he resurrected from the grave. Dead people don't resurrect, but Jesus did. As I said, as a guarantee, as a seal, as a promise that God had accepted his sacrifice. 
And friends, the only thing that separates you and I from a holy God is sin. But all of us are sinful. And so because of our sin, we cannot stand before a holy God, but Jesus, who died in our place, can because he is God. He was the perfect sacrifice. And we see in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, specifically verse 21, it says this, For our sake, for humanity's sake, he, that is God, made him, that is Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, Jesus, we, humanity, might become the righteousness of God. We might have a relationship with him. It is through who? Jesus alone, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father but through him. So he intentionally sent his son to die on our behalf because of our sin. Jesus gives us his righteousness while he takes our sin. And how do you receive this gift? You receive this gift through faith, through believing that Jesus is who he says he is is who he proved himself to be, placing your faith in him alone for your salvation, not in your own good works. And the question then is this, what will you do with Jesus? How will you respond to the gift that he is longing to give you eternal life? So friends, this is why we have hope. This is why we have strength. God warned us all these things would be happening. God gave us redemption through Jesus alone, and we walk by faith, not by sight. We aren't afraid. We are prepared But we don't walk in fear because we know the one who holds all these things and the one who is bringing all these things together. So, friend, if you have not trusted in Jesus, today is the day. Place your faith in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, that's all we have for this week, but I did want to make mention of this. Coming up next week, April the 11th, Thursday at 7 p.m., we have one of our bi-monthly events, our Understanding the Times events, hosted by Jan Markell herself and Mark Henry at Revive Church this time. They will have Alex Newman as a guest. The live stream will begin at about 6.45. It's going to be a great time. I would encourage you, tune into that. He's going to have great information for you. And not only tune in, but bring people together. Have a watch party. You can stream it uh, on the Mark Henry Ministries app. You can uh, also stream it on his website. Very simple, markhenryministries.org. It's going to be a great time. We would encourage you to tune into that. Yeah, churches and groups have been getting together for this. It's a great time of fellowship, make food, uh, and then hang out and talk about it afterwards. It's just a great evening. Uh, mm-hmm. These are these bi-monthly things that they're doing are, are, are awesome. I love it. I can't wait for it. All right. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Uh, until next week, please join us and keep looking up.